Welcome everybody to Fenland Fishing TV. Um, we're going to do a, a nice video explaining the uh, tactics used on the Fenland drains, on the windy Fenland drains, um, targeting the rudd and chop worm fishing for hopefully some tench, maybe an odd bream, some rudd and some big perch hopefully. This time of year the drains are feast or famine, should we say. The fish are on the move into the town or on the march. Um, and it's one of them go hard or go home situations. You know, you're looking in matches, you're looking for big weights and pleasure fishing. The fishing is fantastic. We're going to have a sort of a two pronged approach. We're going to fish the waggler. Hopefully, we're going to catch some lovely bob nuds. I know this section has been fishing really well the last couple of weeks with the fish moving in, so I'm expecting to have some really nice fishing on that. And then the other methods we're going to uh, concentrate on is chop worm and caster fishing. Um, I'm about peg, two pegs above the marina entrance for those that know the March Bypass. Um, so that is situated going out of town from the Bypass Bridge to heading towards Benwick. Um, this time of year it's absolutely rigid with fish and this particular area can be exceptionally good as well. Um, we're going to fish a chop worm line probably about 11 metres. I've had a little plumb up and there's still quite a lot of weed in the river. We've had one frost so far this year, so the weed's still pretty, uh, pretty prominent everywhere. And I'm gonna fish that to my right, because natural flow is left to the right, even though the wind's pushing this way. If we do get some flow, it will naturally push that way against the wind. So that's why I've chose to fish that way. I'm gonna fish a caster line to my left. Um, hopefully we're gonna catch some, maybe some big roach, a bit of everything on that, on a lighter rig, just big potting in casters on there. And then we're going to fish Waggler just towards the boat here, nick a few rud and come off it. Normally you'd have a ground bait line in match situations, but today it's all about catching the rud and the big uh, bonus chop worm fish. Bait wise, worms, maggots, casters, that's all I've got with me, really simple. We've got a few lobbies, half kilo to three quarters of kilo of dendras, a couple of pints of casters, um, which is absolutely ample for a pleasure session like I am on today. And even in a match, if you go through that amount of bait, you've, you've gone on an absolute pile of fish. Talk about my uh, heavy chop worm rig. It's, it's um, set up on the top four here. So I've got a gram and a quarter Drennan AS6 float, which is a carbon stem float with a nice hollow bristle. I've just got a little back shot above that just so I can hold my rig steady against this wind. I've got an 016 main line. Got a little Olivet and a little uh, kicker of number 10s. And then we've got three number 10s down. Sometimes I like to have less than that if the fishing's a bit harder, but I'm expecting quite a few small rud and little perch that might get to the bait before the, the bonus fish do. And then we've got a hook length there of 014. And we've got a size 14 Hayabusa 121 hook which is, is a beast hook. We do hook a decent fish, there's a lot of weed about. We've got a nice so, um, hollow 13 elastic, which I find is just soft enough to cushion on them rud and smaller fish, but then it's got the power in reserve there for when you catch them tench and then big bream. So that's the main chop worm money-making rig, as should we say. That's fished at a slight angle to my right there. I'm just lined up with, um, a marker on the far bank there that's something that's not going to move um, and I'm going to feed that you'll see me potting in a second but I'm going to feed that with um, a few casters a few maggots and some chop lobbies just because I want to catch some bigger fish on that line the other the other rig I've got which I can fish over the top of that if I want to fish smaller hook baits features um, we'll start from the elastic end so we've got a blue Daiwa hybrid elastic I find that's perfect for this sort of fishing, whether you're catching small fish and then an odd bonus fish, it's fantastic. We've got an 014 main line and we've got a half a gram Colmic Frank. Um, it's a nice sort of slim profile float with a little bit of a shoulder. So when I'm laying the rig and holding it against the wind, it just sits perfectly. Again, with a nice, um, fairly thick hollow bristle there. Absolutely bang on for caster fishing. If you wanted to put a bit of worm on, double maggot, that sort of thing. And then we've just got some number 10s nicely strung out there, all the way down to an 010 hook length and a size 16 Hayabusa 128. So um, 
that's sort of my caster rig. And that's set about an inch over depth with this wind. I found a nice little clear spot where I could put my rig in, not worry about my caster sitting on top of the weed. So that's my caster rig. And then waggler setup. So the waggler is really simple on here. For them rudd, you're looking to catch in the first sort of two foot of the water. As the waggler lands, you need to be catching sort of instantly. With the wind and everything, I've set up two, two, um, two rods, both on two and a half pound Maxima. Um, Maxima for this, these conditions, you can put some line sink on or washing up liquid and water, spray it on your spool and it just gets that line underneath that surface skim. So this is a, um, so this setup here is the new Drennan ball weights and two rubbers. So I've, I've switched over this the last couple of years. Just simple fact, it's so quick and easy to change the depth. Just literally like that and away we go. So when you're catching a few fish, you might be picking up a bit of weed straight in, up and down. You not have to worry about moving shot, damaging your line. Um, this is a 4BB waggler today, just because of the wind. We just want a little bit of weight so we can sink that line against. Now float choice, this is a Drake. Uh, we had these specially made in uh, for tackle and baits. Um, features the old onion, which is a classic sort of float pattern for the fen and drains. Um, the reason why I've opted for that is I can sink my line against this weight here, get it all down and not have to worry about my float drifting through my peg. It features a little hollow bristle, a little insert bristle. They do these with a cane bristle as well. Um, so with conditions like today, you've got a little bit of sunlight that glows up, you can dot it right down and it shines like a beacon. Um, so fantastic little floats for this game. And then we've just got three number 10s down the line. Um, so nice and simple, nicely spread out, and that features an 010 hook length and a size 18 Hayabusa on that. So I'm hoping to catch some decent run on that. And that is set probably about two and a half foot deep. I wouldn't probably go any deeper than that to start off with, just because across there you can see there's lots of lilies and weed, but, and you're fishing just close to that. So that's gonna be my main rig today for the waggler. And then if it's a bit harder on clearer conditions, I've got a bit more of a, a longer float. Again, that's a Drake needle point, so it's a lot finer. Um, that is a two and a half BB float. And down the line, we've got a little bulk of tens and then we've got some little styles underneath there, just as a little kicker. Um, that's sort of, I hope I don't have to use that one. That's when I'm searching my peg, when the fish have sort of sussed me out a little bit and I'm chucking it about with peg, just so, trying to find where they've backed off to. Um, so they're my setups, really simple, nothing fancy about it. So we're gonna feed my caster line. I've just chopped a few dendrobenas with this one. Um, we're gonna feed quite a lot of casters today because there's a lot of fish in the swim at the minute. Um, well, I haven't fished yet, but I can tell there's a lot of fish moving about. So we're gonna put a few minch, minch dendras in and then we're gonna put two big handfuls of casters or caster. A few more, a few more casters with that. Lovely. So we're putting in probably, so that's a 250 mil pot. We've probably put 175 mil in there. Um, so it might seem a lot of casters, but I can assure you they'll soon get eaten by all these fish. So I'm going to cut these in. Some people might say uh, bait dropper them in, but today it's only about five and a half foot deep. Um, so we're fishing this line at one short of my 11 meter section, so on the seventh section. Now I've plumbed, I've found a nice little hole. I don't know if you can see, but you've got two sort of rectangle windows and the first circle, circle window on this boat is gonna be my marker. With the wind, I'm just gonna feed it slightly above it so it all lands in a nice there. I'm just gonna turn the pot over, give a bit of a whoosh there, and that's gonna be my caster line. So that's in the deepest part of my peg. Um, I'm hoping to catch a few rudd there. So the next line I'm gonna feed is my big fish line. As you can see, I've put a section on there. And this is going to be fished at the bottom 
of the far shelf to my right. Now, I'm gonna feed this with lobbies. I'm gonna chop up. Reason why I'm feeding lobbies, as you can see there, lovely big fresh lobbies. The reason I'm gonna feed lobbies is I don't want the rud and other fish to be eating these before the big fish get a chance to, to have a bit of a chew. And I'm not gonna chop these up too fine. Just give it a few there. I'm gonna give it a few maggots just in case there's a few eels about. And again, decent amount of casters. Similar volume of bait, about 100, 150 mil to 175 mil. So give that a bit of a whisk. If they had slight flow on it today, I'd be opting for a bait dropper like that. Um, wish someone would make these again. These are the old original Fox ones. Um, new fish do some good bait droppers as well as um, fishtail. Um, I'd choose these just because it opens every time and I've had these for donkey's years. They're two different sizes. Normally if you're bait dropping in, you'd probably put one, of, one or two of them in at the start here um, and then top up with a smaller one. But today we're going for the big cup. There's no movement as such. It's not flowing um, and I want to attract a few fish in the peg. So up we go. Now I've plumbed up a nice little hole, and then we're just gonna just gonna put that between the legs exactly where I want it, lined up with my marker. Just gonna turn that pot over there. Goes down. Lovely. So that's my two lines fed. In normal match conditions, I'll be starting short, catching a few roach. Uh, but today I'm gonna chuck the waggler. Normally the waggler would be something that I come on to sort of later stages of the match as the fish progress. But this time of year, um, the rudder are here in numbers and you can, you know, you've got to make hay while the sun shines. So I'm going to start, start on the waggler and uh, hopefully catch a few rudd. 20 minute look on my chop worm lines, hopefully it produces some big fish and we'll go from there. So feeding the waggler. Um, as you can see, it's very windy. I think pinkies will be very difficult to feed today. Um, so we're just going to feed maggots. Um, you don't have to be too accurate with the waggler. The whole reason why the waggler works is because it's not all tight on top of each other. It's sort of spread out. The rudder are very aggressive um, and it, it just works. It's um, one of them, the reason why it works is because it's not all down one hole and nice and neat and tidy. Um, I don't get me wrong, you have to fish it neat and tidy, but you're not plundering it all down one hole. We've fed a few maggots, we've fed a couple of chucks. What I, what I do find with rudd, especially on these Fenland drains, when they're in your peg, you don't necessarily have to feed a lot of bait. Um, just because they're there, you know, they're there. Because, they're not there because you've fed them, they're there because they're in your peg at that time. So we're just gonna start on a double maggot. Um, again, fishing it down with the wind. So a couple of flink sink the line you see that line's all underneath that wind now that is a fish surely yeah so straight away that's how rapid it is for these rudd just a small one to start let's get that wicket out another one Slightly on the small side, but I think these will soon turn to them better stamp fish once we sort it out. A big red maggot. The old faithful. Couple of turns, flick of the rod. Instant. So they're not big fish at the minute, they're just sort of ounce and a half, two ounce size fish. But you're catching extremely fast. Little flick. Slightly bigger one, oh, it's come off. Again, you've noticed I haven't fed yet. 
deliberately not feeding if I can help it. As you can see, it's rigid with very a small rod at the minute, but I'm sure we'll start catching some better ones. As you can see, I'm not chucking tight over to start as well. That's because if I chuck over straight away, I'm going to push the fish out of my peg a bit quicker so I'm, I'm chucking a bit short and then as the as the session goes on I'm gonna sort of progress over I might have to chuck here there and everywhere later when the rud sort of suss me out so we've got to make the most of these uh, of these fish so I've had um, 20 minutes on the waggler and it's been two a minute not particularly big stamp an odd better stamp one mixed in um, so I'm just itching now to get on this uh, proper chop worm rig. Hopefully catch some um, some uh, some proper fish. So we're going to fish a full dendrobina nipped in half on this. Nice medium-sized dendra nipped in half. Like so. Oh, let's have a look. All right, so we're just gonna hold that rig so it goes in a nice straight line. We'll slowly lower it in nice and gently like that. Just hold the bristle and the body out. We're just gonna drop it in like that. And I think there's probably a rud on that already. Yeah, and he's eating my worm already. That's the problem with these little ruds, there's millions of them. That's why you want quite a bit of line, a uh, bit of weight down your line just to get through them. Again, full dendra. Wind's just getting up slightly. Right. See that? Lovely bite. Let it go, let it go, let it go. That's a perch. So I first chuck on the worm. That's all right. Straight back out. I always find with perch, you tend to get a real run of them and then all of a sudden they disappear. So normally when there's a few perch kicking about in your peg, there's, there's not normally tension and a big fish there. When them big fish come in your peg, they tend to push them smaller perch out. So hold that back against that skim. There we go, another small indication there. Let it go. That's well a fish. So that one I think probably is another perch. Nice little dumpy perch. Proper nice little weight builders. The drains are absolutely full of these this time of year. Um, 
a lot of the venues you can uh, catch them really short on whips and stuff. Um, it's good to change your bait for a nice little lobby tail. So I'll probably intercept that on the way down. Yep, I think that might be one of these nuisance rud. Another perch. It's black with a little perch. Greedy little buggers. Back shot just above the float just um just helps it just get all into oh that felt a lot better fish that one um just helps that float get through the skim and just to sit sensibly there's another uh, small fish on the end of that now i think there's so many fish in the river at the minute Might be a couple of feeds before we get through these small perch and start catching some better fish, but we're just going to uh, carry on for a little while and just see what happens. So on this 11 metre proper shot worm line, it is absolutely full of small perch and rud. Um, not sort of the target species that we wanted, to be honest. Um, so what I'm going to do is I feel like there's a hell of a lot of fish here, so I'm going to catch a couple more if I can get my rig in properly because of the wind um, and then I'm going to top up again um, it is absolutely rigid with them um, so I'm just going to be really aggressive with the feed and hopefully that oh that's another perch it's like the smaller one it's absolutely solid with them which is great to see um, Nice little dumpy perch. You do a real weight of these. Little dendra. So I'm gonna go back out again. One more go. Then I'm gonna refeed it. I don't normally like to refeed my big fish line when I'm getting bites on it. Um, but I think because there's so many fish here, I need to get some bait in my peg just to try and hold a bigger fish because I don't think they're getting a look in with these perch and, and rud. But we keep feeding this waggler line. Um, We'll drop on that in a bit. Across there. Just absolutely full of small fish. Greedy little perch. So now I'm going to try this cast line. See what we can catch on that. A nice little half gram strung out Colmic Frank. Um, I always find casters produces them just that little bit better stamped fish. Uh, just a single caster. See what happens. Another rud, yeah. I think well, that one didn't even get a chance to go out and there was a fish on the end of that. So that just says it all about this venue at the minute. I think in normal match conditions, you just take your brain out and catch a million rud. Because uh, I think it's quite easy to catch a big weight of rud today, but we're just trying to sort them better stamp ones out for you. Uh, 
gonna lay that in like that. Uh, that is a fish on that already, look. Guess what? Put some red. So I'm getting absolutely mullered with small red and it is proper doing my head in. Um, something that I'd never be saying in match conditions, but everything I'm doing, I'm just catching small rud so um i found some sweet corn in the bottom of my bag and uh i'm going to refeed and hopefully i can get through them small fish um we'll give it a go eh because i'm getting mullered by these small fish and i want to want to catch some big fish i'm just trying a single grain of corn over i've been big potting these casters and uh Hopefully we can get a bait to the bottom that's going to sit there for a big enough fish to come and find it. Um, we shall see. So that's my first bite on a bit of sweet corn. As you can see, it is a better rud. Um, as many bites on a bit of sweet corn than there is on worms. That's how rigid it is. A lot bigger fish. Waiting for bites. Beautiful fish. Look at that look. Roach. No, no, it's not. What is it? It's a rud. We've been getting absolutely mullered knowing that these fish are in here um, by the smaller ones. And um, we've just been super aggressive. Something that I don't normally do and I've got some sweet corn out of the bag and um, it's one of these a chuck now. So just goes to show Mickey Mouse method that Andy Page would probably start on sometimes does have its day. So into a better fish, tactical switch to the corn and there's some lovely rud here now. Rud that you wouldn't even think were in your peg. Probably because they just can't, they just haven't got time to get, get to your hook bait. So madness, single corn over the caster. Um, size 12 hook. Amazing. Hey, oh, it's the old pommy look. Right, I'm just going to go on that line where I've put some corn in over them, the real positive line at 11 metres. Just going to try a bit of corn over that. So to summarise, we've had a pretty uh, frustrating session, to be honest. Um, not through lack of fish, I think there's just um, too many fish. Um, we've just been absolutely mullered by um, the piranhas, the little rud. I've been fishing corn, we've been really aggressive with the feed. 
Um, we've used heavier rigs, bigger hooks. We've tried pretty much everything to uh, try and get through them and um, the peg just to, seems to be absolutely full of these small rud. Um, corn's definitely sorted out the better fish. Um, the waggler has been a fish every two seconds of it hitting the water, um, mainly small rud. And now the weather's closing in and there's all this horrible cabbages that have been cut down somewhere upstream that I can't even get my rig in properly. So it's been quite a frustrating day, to be honest. Um, if I was in match conditions, I think I would have caught 30 pounds standing on my head. It's absolutely rigid with fish. Um, obviously, the, the idea of the feature today, the video, was to try and catch some big fish and some big rud. Um, but it hasn't gone to plan. Um, we've caught plenty of fish, but um, just mainly small stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had some nice sort of five to six ounce rud. We've had quite a few of them, but um, not quite what we wanted. If I was in match conditions, I'd be fishing short on a whip. Um, I think you could catch five, six hundred fish quite comfortably. Um, and they're, you know, they're decent enough stamp to catch 25 to 30 pound, no problem. Um, yeah, and I think if it was in match conditions, there wouldn't be as many of these small rud anyway. I think with other anglers about feeding, I mean, the more I've fed, the more rud have sort of appeared in my swim, and normally it's the other way around. Um, so yeah, I can't even get a rig in now for all this crap on the surface. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a day. And um, we've still caught double figures of fish, I would think, quite comfortably and that's trying to avoid them. So I um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, it's been frustrating for me. I would have liked to have caught a few more fish, but, oh, that's a better fish. No, it's not. It's another rud on the old green giant. So probably finish on this one. Nice stamp rud, four ounce. Well over double figures there. Um, of rud, no tench, but fantastic days fishing. How many people can say they've been frustrated by rud? Um, loads of little perch in the river as well. So as it gets colder, I expect these fish to sort of start to move near into the town, but um, fantastic bag of fish. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the video.